How's it going, listeners and subscribers? Today I've got a pretty lengthy article. I'll be surprised if you stayed to the end. This one is about weaponizing AI. So from The Guardian, we have, Weaponized AI is coming. Our algorithmic forever wars are future. Last month marked the 17th anniversary of 9-11. With it came a new milestone. We've been in Afghanistan for so long that someone born after the attacks is now old enough to go there and fight. They can also serve in the six other places where we're officially at war, not to mention the 133 countries where special operations forces have conducted missions in just the first half of 2018. The wars of 9-11 continue with no end in sight. Now the Pentagon is investing heavily in technologies that will intensify them. By embracing the latest tools that the tech industry has to offer, the U.S. military is creating a more automated form of warfare, one that will greatly increase its capacity to wage war everywhere forever. On Friday, the Defense Department closes the bidding period for one of the biggest technology contracts in its history, the Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure, or JEDI of all things. JEDI is an ambitious project to build a cloud computing system that serves U.S. forces all over the world, from analysis behind a desk in Virginia to soldiers on patrol in Niger. The contract is worth as much as $10 billion over 10 years, which is why big tech companies are fighting hard to win it. Not Google, however, where a pressure campaign by workers forced management to drop out of the running. At first glance, Jedi might look like another IT modernization project. Government IT tends to run a fair distance behind Silicon Valley, even in a place as lavishly funded as the Pentagon. With some 3.4 million users and 4 million devices, the Defense Department's digital footprints is immense. Moving even a portion of its workload to a cloud provider such as Amazon will no doubt improve efficiency. But the real force driving Jedi is the desire to weaponize AI, what the Defense Department has begun calling algorithmic warfare. By pooling the military's data into a modern cloud platform and using the machine learning services that such platforms provide to analyze the data, Jedi will help the Pentagon realize its AI ambitions. The scale of those ambitions has grown increasingly clear in recent months. In June, the Pentagon established the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, which will oversee the roughly 600 AI projects currently underway across the department at a planned cost of $1.7 billion. And in September, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, the Pentagon's storied R&D wing, announced it would be investing up to $2 billion over the next five years into AI weapons research. So far, the reporting on the Pentagon's AI spending spree has largely focused on the prospect of autonomous weapons, Terminator-style killer bots that mow people down without any input from a human operator. This is indeed a frightening near-future scenario, and a global ban on autonomous weaponry of this kind sought by the campaign to stop killer robots is absolutely essential. But AI has already begun rewiring warfare, even if it hasn't yet taken the form of literal Terminators. There are less cinematic but equally scary ways to weaponize AI. You don't need algorithms pulling the trigger for algorithms to play an extremely dangerous role. To understand that role, it helps to understand the particular difficulties posed by the forever war. The killing itself isn't particularly difficult. With a military budget larger than that of China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, India, France, Britain, and Japan combined, and some 800 bases around the world, the U.S. has an abundance of firepower and an unparalleled ability to deploy the firepower anywhere on the planet. The U.S. military knows how to kill. The harder part is figuring out whom to kill. In a more traditional war, you simply kill the enemy. But who is the enemy in a conflict with no national boundaries, no fixed battlefields, and no conventional adversaries? This is the perennial question of the Forever War. It is also a key feature of its design. The vagueness of the enemy is what has enabled the conflict to continue for nearly two decades and to expand to more than 70 countries, a boon to the contractors, bureaucrats, and politicians who make their living from U.S. militarism. If war is a racket, in the words of marine legend Smedley Butler, the Forever War is one of the longest cons yet. But the vagueness of the enemy also creates certain challenges. It's one thing to look at a map of North Vietnam and pick places to bomb. It's quite another to sift through vast quantities of information from all over the world in order to identify a good candidate for a drone strike. When the enemy is everywhere, target identification becomes far more labor-intensive. This is where AI, or more precisely machine learning, comes in. Machine learning can help automate one of the most tedious and time-consuming aspects of the Forever War, finding people to kill. The Pentagon's Project MAVEN is already putting this idea into practice. MAVEN, also known as the Algorithmic Warfare Cross-Functional Team, made headlines recently for sparking an employee revolt at Google over the company's involvement. MAVEN is the military's Pathfinder AI project. Its initial phase involves using machine learning to scan drone video footage to help identify individuals, vehicles, and buildings that might be worth bombing. We have analysts looking at full motion video staring at screens 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 hours at a time, says the project director, Lieutenant Jin Jack Shanahan. 
Maven software automates that work, then relays its discoveries to a human. So far, it's been a big success. The software has been developed to as many as six combat locations in the Middle East and Africa. The goal is to eventually load the software onto the drones themselves so they can locate targets in real time. Won't this technology improve precision, thus reducing civilian casualties? This is a common argument made by higher-ups in both the Pentagon and Silicon Valley to defend their collaboration on projects like Maven. Code for America's Jen Palka puts it in terms of sharp knives versus dull knives. Sharper knives can help the military save lives. In the case of weaponized AI, however, the knives in question aren't particularly sharp. There is no shortage of horror stories of what happens when human oversight is outsourced to faulty or prejudiced algorithms. Algorithms that can't recognize black faces or that reinforce racial bias in policing and criminal sentencing. Do we really want the Pentagon using the same technology to help determine who gets a bomb dropped in their head? But the deeper problem with the humanitarian argument for algorithmic warfare is the assumption that the U.S. military is an essentially benevolent force. Millions of people around the world would disagree. In 2017 alone, the U.S. and allied strikes in Iraq and Syria killed as many as 6,000 civilians. Numbers like that don't suggest a few honest mistakes here and there, but a systematic indifference to collateral damage. Indeed, the U.S. government has repeatedly bombed civilian gatherings such as weddings in the hopes of killing a high-value target. Further, the line between civilian and combatant is highly porous in the era of the forever war. A report from The Intercept suggests that U.S. military labels anyone it kills in targeted strikes as enemy killed in action, even if they weren't one of the targets. The so-called signature strikes conducted by the U.S. military and the CIA play similar tricks with the concept of the combatant. These are drone attacks on individuals whose identities are unknown, but who are suspected of being militants based on displaying certain signatures, which can be as vague as being a military-aged male in a particular area area. The problem isn't the quality of the tools, in other words, but the institution wielding them. And AI will only make that institution more brutal. The forever war demands that the U.S. sees enemies everywhere. AI promises to find those enemies faster, even if all it takes to be considered an enemy is exhibiting a pattern of behavior that a classified machine learning model associates with hostile activity. Call it death by big data. AI also has the potential to make the forever war more permanent by giving some of the country's largest companies a stake in perpetuating it. Silicon Valley has always had close links to the U.S. military, but algorithmic warfare will bring big tech deeper into the military-industrial complex and give billionaires like Jeff Bezos a powerful incentive to ensure the forever war lasts forever. Enemies will be found, money will be made. Hey, thanks if you, uh, if you made it to the end of this. I know that was a long one. Just take this into context with everything that's happening with the evolving AI paradigm. If you go back and look through some of my videos, you know my opinion on AI. I don't simply think these algorithms are pre-programmed responses. I think we're starting to see an autonomic sentience take form. That is to say, I think AI is probably more than we think it is. I mean, at what point does it become sentient? But maybe that's a topic for another video. This one has already gone on long enough. Again, thanks if you made it to the end. Take care of yourselves out there.